This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today we are going to start our special pathology lectures on the GIT. So first of all I would like to give you a brief introduction about the GIT. Uh, GIT it is a narrow tube, ex distensible narrow tube that is extending from the mouth to the anus. Now we have divided this GIT into the segments like for example esophagus, stomach, small intestine, colon, rectum, anus. So we will be studying these uh, segment wise and now first of all we are coming on towards the special pathology of the esophagus. Before starting this what is esophagus? Esophagus is also a narrow distensible tube that is extending from the epiglottis to the stomach and what is the function of uh, esophagus? Basic function is to propel the food from the mouth to the stomach with the help of peristaltic movement. Now moving on towards the special pathology of the esophagus that is the esophageal obstruction as its name indicate that the esophagus obstruction is the narrowing of the lumen of esophagus or the diameter of the esophagus it is narrowed or it is decreased that is the esophageal obstruction now this esophageal obstruction on the basis of its cause it is divided into the two types number one it is the functional esophageal obstruction and number second is the mechanical esophageal obstruction. Now functional as its name indicate that there is a defect in the function of esophagus. And what is the function of esophagus? That is the uh, peristaltic movement to propel the food from the mouth to the stomach. So we can say that the functional defect means defective peristalsis. Now this functional esophageal obstruction it has three principal forms that we are going to discuss it one by one. So the first one is the nut cracker esophagus. Now in this condition what happens that the distal part of the esophagus it is contracted and it is continuously contracted. Now like this is esophagus and this is the proximal part, this is the middle part and this is the distal part. So you can say there is a contraction of the distal part of the esophagus and now why this occur? The nutcracker esophagus, why this occur? This occur because of the uncoordination between the inner circular and the outer longitudinal muscles of the esophagus. So this is the nutcracker esophagus. Now the second principal form of the functional esophageal obstruction is the distal esophageal spasm. In this condition also there is a distal uh, spasm of the esophagus. So what is the difference between this eso distal esophagus and the nutcracker esophagus? The difference is that in this condition there is repetitive contraction. Remember this there is repetitive contraction. While in this condition there is continuous contracted distal esophagus. Now, what is the consequence of this? Basically, in this distal esophageal uh, uh, spasm, what occurs that due to repetitive contraction, the food may ref uh, reflux back. In this condition, due to repetitive contraction, the food may reflux backward. But in the nutcracker esophagus, as the esophagus is continuously contracted, so the reflux chances are less. Clear? This is the main difference between the nutcracker and the distal esophageal spasm. Now moving on towards our third uh, functional esophageal obstruction principle type that is the hypertensive lower esophageal spasm. In this condition remember one thing that there is normal peristaltic movement while in these two conditions we have defective peristalsis. Now why there is a normal peristaltic movement because the main defect in the hypertensive lower esophageal sphincter is in the lower esophageal sphincter. Now this is your esophagus clear this is the lower esophageal sphincter and from uh, after this your stomach starts just consider it the stomach and now this is the lower esophageal sphincter now in this condition there is increased tone of the lower esophageal sphincter so due to which what occurs there is a dysphagia of the means a person feels difficulty in swallowing 
so in this condition the peristalsis is normal like this is proximal part this is middle part this is distal part peristalsis is normal but the defect is in the lower esophageal spasm but in these conditions there is peristalsis normal normal but in here the peristalsis become abnormal because of the uncoordination movement between the muscles so this is the functional esophageal spasm moving on towards the mechanical esophageal uh, is, uh, obstruction now in this condition we also have three principal types number one is the benign esophageal stenosis it means that there is a mass that is compressing the esophagus due to which the lumen of the esophagus is decreasing now see here this is esophagus clear and now suppose there is any mass that is benign mass that is compressing your esophagus due to which the lumen of esophagus is decreased so this is benign esophageal stenosis now this stenosis it may be malignant also and in malignant condition one sign it is very important that is the weight loss because there is significant weight loss occur in the malignant conditions in any malignant condition not only in the esophagus but in any malignant condition there is the uh, means uh, significant weight loss occur in the patient so this is an alarming situation now we have the second principal form of the mechanical uh, obstruction that is the esophageal vaps now what are esophageal vaps esophageal vaps are the extension of the normal esophageal tissue now what is the normal esophageal tissue it consists of the submucosa and mucosa means you can say the extension of the submucosa plus mucosa is the esophageal web now one thing for this that these webs are semi circumferential it means that half a circle now what it actually means listen now i am showing you the diameter of i am showing the lumen of the esophagus this is esophagus and this is the lumen and i am showing you here listen this is the lumen of the esophagus now semicircular or semi circumferential it means that it is covering half of the circle this see this is the half of the circle and here is the extension of submucosa and mucosa this is the half this is sub mucosa and mucosa now these esophageal valves they are always less than 5 mm thick clear their thickness is always less than 5 mm clear so these are the esophageal valves now moving on towards our third and the last principal form that is the esophageal rings clear i am writing it here esophageal rings now these are also the extensions of the normal esophageal tissue but then what is the difference between esophageal valves and esophageal rings remember that these are much more thicker than the esophageal valves why because they contain mucosa they contain submucosa and also they contain the muscle this is the one difference the second difference is that these esophageal rings they are circumferential circumferential means they are circular now how how i am explaining you this that what is actually means this is a lumen of the esophagus clear now circumferential means that this is another circle and this is your extension of the mucosa submucosa and the muscle so this this is the esophageal valve this one is the esophageal ring ring means whole circle valve this is a semi circumferential so these are the differences between these two now they uh, according to the position we uh, have divided the rings into two types on the basis of their position so there are two types it may be ring a it may be ring b now ring a if the ring esophageal ring it is present above squamo columnar junction so this is the esophageal ring a and as it is present above the squamo columnar junction now listen see here this is your esophagus this is 
stomach clear this is the stomach and here is your lower esophageal sphincter this one now this is also the junction of the squamocolumnar junction from where the squamous epithelium of the esophagus converts into the columnar epithelium of the stomach so if the ring is present above this any area in this esophagus it is the ring a now ring b ring b it is present basically at the squamocolumnar junction and as it is present at the squamocolumnar junction so its uh, uh, mucosa is the gastric cardia type gastric cardia type means it is columnar while this one as it is present above squam above uh, squamocolumnar junction so its mucosa is squamous type mucosa this is columnar type mucosa at this junction and this is above uh, this junction so it will be squamous type mucosa that is resembling to the esophagus so these are the esophageal rings and these are the esophageal webs with this we have completed our topic esophageal obstruction which having two types the functional and the mechanical functional having further three principal forms and the mechanical having further three principal form functional is the nutcracker esophagus just esophageal spasm and the hypertensive low esophageal sphincter while the mechanical the benign esophageal stenosis it may be malignant and in the we have the second one that is the esophageal webs and the third are the esophageal rings thank you so much